In this video we're going to look at monohybrid crosses. We're going to define monohybrid crosses and then use monohybrid crosses and the tool Punnett squares to look at the P generation, F1 and F2 generations. So firstly, the definition of a monohybrid cross is a mating between two individuals used when we're studying a particular trait. And the important thing here is that it's one trait being mono. Uh, we also have dihybrid crosses, trihybrid crosses. They are much more complicated. This is the monohybrid cross. And what we're going to look at is these two individuals here, a purple flower and a white flower. Now we know that one of the things Mendel did, which made his experiment so good, is that he got true breed peas. So he bred them for two years prior to actually doing his experiments so that they were homozygous for each trait. So in this case, our purple flower, being the phenotype purple, has a genotype big P, big P, coming from the purple, and because it is dominant, it's the capital. And our white flower, little p, little p, again coming from the dominant trait, the purple, and being lowercase to show that it is recessive. And now that we've said that we're going to use P's, you can probably notice that they're a little bit confusing on the screen to work out the difference between a big P and a little p. Uh, so instead, I'm going to use the letters B. Uh, usually you would use P, but to avoid confusion, I'm going to stick with big B, big B, and little b, little b, being the genotypes of my two P plants. Now what we're going to do to find out what the offspring are going to be, or could be, uh, is we're going to use Punnett squares. Now, Punnett squares, you might think Punnets of fruit. That's what I think in my head. However, they're actually named after Reginald Punnett, who was a geneticist at the turn of last century, who came up with this, uh, these Punnett squares. Uh, and they're a tool that geneticists use to these day. Now, you can draw it just like a big hash symbol, uh, but I'm going to make mine a little bit fancier. Uh, on the top, I'm going to have the male. The male being the purple plant, which is big B, big B, or homozygous dominant. We then put the female's two alleles down the side. Little B, little B, uh, being the white flower, or the homozygous recessive. Now, what we're looking at here is taking each allele from the parent and bringing it to the offspring. So this is how we get the law of segregation, uh, being that these two alleles are segregated and only one gets passed on to the offspring. So here we have the big B will be passed on from the male, from the pollen, and the little B will come from the pistil. We'll also get the big B and little B here, big B, little B here, and big B, little B here. So it'll look something like this. So what we have is each of those offspring, now we're talking about the F1 generation here, have the genotype big B, little b, being that they are heterozygous. However, because the purple is dominant to the white, uh, they will all have the phenotype of purple flowers. So the F1 generation, uh, heterozygous, purple, and the genotype being big B, little b. Okay, so that's the F1 generation, or the filial 1 generation, just means family, coming from the P generation. What we're going to do now is look at that F1 generation, and what happens if you breed two from that generation to create the F2 generation. So again, we're going to use a Punnett square, and we remember that the F1 generation was the big B, little b, uh, so we're going to put the male at the top, big B, little b, being the heterozygous purple flower. And down the side, we'll have a big B, little b female as well. Now you'll notice that we're actually going to get some different things here. So we've got the big B from the male, big B from the female, the pistol. So here we're going to have two big Bs. Here we'll have the little b from the male, the big b from the female. Again, we'll have the big b from the male and the little b from the female. 
and here we'll get the two little b's. So this one will be little b, little b. Now you can see that we've got some different ones here. Of the four options that we get, uh, and this is probability. It's not the numbers, it's not you have four kids or four flowers and one's going to be this colour, one's going to be another colour. Uh, it's This is a probability thing. What this is saying is that 25% will be big B, big B, or purple homozygous. 25% will be big B, big B, plus another 25% here. So that is 50% will be big B, little b. And then and the other 25% will be little b, little b, down the bottom here. But for the flowers, because the b, big B is dominant, three of those four flowers, or 75%, are going to be purple in their phenotype. So to sum that up, we have three different genotypes, big B, big B, which are, have a phenotype of purple being 25%. Big B, little b, phenotype of purple being 50%, in total making a phenotype of 75% purple. And then we have the little b, little b having a phenotype of white, and there's 25% of those. In this video, we've defined monohybrid crosses as a mating between two individuals where we're studying one trait. We've talked about the P generation and Mendel's P, P generation were true bred, so therefore they were homozygous for either purple or white. We've talked about the Punnett square as a tool that geneticists use to work out what the offspring of a particular cross will be between two individuals. We've looked at the F1 generation, which are the heterozygous purple, uh, all of them 100%. And we've looked at the F2 generation, where we get a 3 to 1 ratio, or 75% purple and 25% white. And we also get 25% little b, little b, or that homozygous white, 25% big b, big b, the homozygous purple, and 50% big b, little b, being the heterozygous purple. Thanks for watching. Peace out, guys.